talented soccer player. He could have played in college on a D1 scholarship. But the adrenaline rush he felt when he kicked a game-winning field goal in high school and the thought of duplicating that high, those cheers, is why he made the switch to football. Privately, however, the Penn State kicker was dealing with unimaginable lows. And the voices he heard loudest, judgmental and cruel, came from inside his own head. In conjunction with our colleagues at Good Morning America, Jen Latta shares his story. Julius has it teed up. This is how the football world sees Joey Julius. And Julius, the man doing the covering downfield. Oh, that's a kicker's dream right there. <laughs> as he throws a return man down. <laughs> he loves to cover his own kicks. He'll be a legend forever. <laughs> Probably one of the best athletes I ever witnessed in person. Uh, he could have been a star on the soccer team, the football team, basketball team, or baseball team. And when you look at him now, I don't think people realize what type of athlete he really is. But up until very recently, Joey Julius saw himself very differently. Disgusting, ugly. I mean, I was just, you know, I was always calling myself fat. I would, you know, kind of pick at certain parts of my body I didn't like. Body image issues were probably one of my biggest things. It was just a few weeks ago that the Penn State kicker explained those feelings in a Facebook post revealing a very personal battle with an eating disorder. Due to my increase in not only weight, but also depression and anxiety, my team physicians started to notice not only a change in my overall happiness, but also my performance as a normal human being. They pulled me aside and they're like, hey, like, you can't even function during like workouts and things like that. My health was like completely deteriorated. And that's when they're like, all right, let's, let's try to send you to a treatment center. In May, Joey began a three month stay at an inpatient facility in Missouri. There he was diagnosed with binge eating disorder or BED. He says his unhealthy relationship with food started when he was just 10. I was overweight as a kid. I got bullied a lot. You know, I took all those emotions and I put it into food. I mean, food was my escape. For me, it was restriction. It was hiding, because I used to hide food from people out of uh, embarrassment, because I was ashamed. You, you could tell he was getting a little bit more withdrawn his senior year. I do think probably there were some things going on that maybe we should have seen some red flags, but unfortunately we didn't. After I would get done eating, I would have to lay down to the point where I was so sick I couldn't move. I hated myself. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, binge eating disorder is the most common eating disorder in the country. 40% of those who struggle with BED are men. Many are athletes, and many will not seek help or treatment. We have this whole, you know, stigma of just being a man and being a football player and, you know, rub some dirt on it. Uh, you know, don't cry. When I was in treatment, I was one of maybe two guys, like, in my unit. Joey rejoined his team in early August and he's enjoying football more than he ever has before. He now sees that his story is nothing to be ashamed of, and he hopes the world sees another side of his strength. Before games, I could barely function last year. It was really hard just to get out to the game. And now it's just like I'm going out and having fun with my friends. He can make people aware that, hey, this does happen to normal kids. This happens to very athletic kids in Joey's situation. You know, I had a problem and I needed to get help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I asked for help and it changed my life. 